Well, it's that time again. I mean, if you don't remember a couple episodes ago, I talked about Zaba Fiestiga. Talked about the school meeting that happened to talk about this pandemic. And uh, one issue that really got to my attention was uh, the walkout that was going to happen this in. It's going to happen a couple days ago. But I just got word that it's going to happen in September. That means that everyone's going to participate in this. I'll get to, and I'll probably tell you what I'm going to say in just a minute. But uh, what I want to stress out to this is that, like what I've told you guys many times, I mean, all school districts respect everyone's First Amendment rights. Y'all may be saying, like, no, they don't. It's like, well, they do. I mean, all school districts don't encourage protesting. They don't encourage violence and all that stuff. Like, that's what I do. I don't encourage. Just like you guys have probably when I'm out when I'm when I'm out there playing my guitar in the streets. I don't encourage swearing. I don't encourage violence and all that kind of stuff. I keep it simple and clean, like in Kingdom Hearts. That's what many people have to many people have to say, but uh, the issue is when people are going out doing protests and doing walkouts. That, that many people think that's a great way to solve problems, which is not. And I'm going to explain to you right now. There are other ways to solve this problem. If you don't like the dress code, you can simply you have a principal and assistant and assistant principal or assistant principals. You can talk with them and, as a pair and simply say, look, I have an issue with the dress code concerning this or that. I want to explain, like, I want to explain how I feel about it. But I've talked about dress code all over. I've been, in every episode I've talked about dress code. Mainly because, mainly because I want to... What this show is mainly focused on is ending distraction to the environmental, to the educational environment. And this is, and this is a cherry on top of this. Going out there, doing a walk-in because you don't like the dress code. Well, I understand, like, what you're planning and all, guys, but, again, there are other ways to solve this problem. You can talk with your assistant principal, talk with the principal, the door's always open, the schedule, you, the secretary's schedule appointments, and you can talk with them as a group, write a, write a speech and say, write a little speech or PowerPoint to explain this, and then, bam, talk with them, show them the PowerPoint, inspire them, and then the principal of the file say, saying, okay, I understand what you're saying and all, but this dress code stands. I mean, I've read to you guys the, the dress code for during the last episode and I'm not afraid to read it again for this for this for today's episode. Simply I'm not afraid to Look at dress codes. I'm not even afraid to read you. It's established to heat grooming and hygiene, prevent disruption, and minimize safety hazards. There are certain essential part of the educational process. All students are expected to dress and groom themselves, nearly including suitable for school activities. And every school district has a right. To ask students or a student or student to change his or her dress or personal grooming habits. If it is deemed inappropriate or disruptive to the educational environment, a violation of dress grooming shall be the defiance of authority or in subordination and a result of disciplinary action described in the student code of conduct. That make the final determination is what constitutes appropriate attire. If you if any parents or have difficulty providing or clothing, Children should contact the campus council for assistance.
I mean, like I said, clothing must be entirely appropriate for school. Reviewing time materials are not appropriate. The campus principal has the final authority to determine whether students dress within the requirements of district and campus dress codes. The judge will determine whether any items of dress mentioned or not mentioned in the district campus dress code are considered appropriate for school attire. Gems are prohibited. It must be school organized and related. Undergarments may not be visible. Beachwear is not allowed. Undergarments may not be visible. Shorts and jeans must be appropriately, and uh, dollar bills with, does not apply to pre K fourth. Strongly encouraged to wear shorts, dresses due to the physical activities. Clothing must be no shorter than the dollar bills with two and three quarters inches above the kneecap. And even shirts, no low cuts, no, are not appropriate for school if worn alone, like muscle shirts, tank tops, blacklist see through tops with thin shoulder straps. Shoulder straps may be at least, must be at least the width of the dollar bill in grades 3 through 12. No trench coats, oversized jackets, coats are permitted. I want you like wearing a jacket to hide your favorite shirt. All male students be clean shaven, clean, trim kept out of the eye, sideburns maybe no longer on the bottom of the ear. No arrangements that are distracting the environment like mohawks, words, symbols, etc. styles. No solid colors, etc. Tattoos are prohibited, earrings are prohibited for fourth grade. Must be worn at all times, close to. PK through eight, strapless open heel sandal shoes are are not allowed, meaning prohibited. And uh, basically, steel toe boots are prohibited, steel shoes with wheels are not permitted, bench and slippers are prohibited. Earrings are not allowed in boys pre K through 6. Makeup must not be distracting in color, design, and style. And even one of the barns is not acceptable. All students must abide by the campus and district dress code guidelines for the elementary, intermediate, and junior high campuses. All clothing must be in solid colors. That's for the, I think, but the high school, I mean, they can simply choose to simply say, I don't like this dress code and all that, but you can talk to the council and your principal, they have to final say in this. Um, next, we're going to move on to COVID, and uh, up next, we're going to move on to COVID and see what the issue is, and then what more topics as you make Saturday continue, so stay right there. Let's move on towards COVID now, I mean. Cases are rising every day, and the new Delta variant. And look at this in New Mason County 53,222, none have recovered, and we're getting close to 1,000 deaths. 3.56 million total cases plus 10,000. And the deaths in here 56,741 plus 222. They're getting close to 8,000 in Harris County, Dallas County is close to 5,000. The lowest ever, the very lowest, has to be the lowest ever. Cook County with 75, uh, Frail County. Clayhorn County, lowest ever. As for the vaccines, as for the tests, since the 23rd, tests have been taken 1.88 million. Hospitalizations, tests were taken, positive tests since June 1st, since the 14th. Hospitalizations, well, since, since the 27th, 94,000 are hospitalized and 24,000 are ICU. Vaccinations, at least one dose, 16.4 million. 
and 13.4, 13.6 million have been fully vaccinated. I'm one of those people who have been fully vaccinated. And for schools, I mean, CCIC is doing a great job in uh, enforcing the mask mandate for like 30 days. But Flyer Bluff, I mean, a couple of days ago when I told you about a school, school board meeting that happened, one lady gave an amazing speech talking about talking about the choice for parents. I mean, yes, I understand for parents, everybody has a choice for all parents, but school districts might not understand it. When you enforce a mask mandate for people who have not been vaccinated, then uh, you then it's kind of down to where you either not enforce it or simply go. If we enforce a mask mandate for people who have not been vaccinated, then we have to do the same for people who are vaccinated. And to me, that'd be a big time issue to be confused. Unless you have a vaccine card. If you have a vaccine card stating that, you're, that you've been vaccinated, you need to show it. You need to keep it in your wallet at all times, keep it in your pocket. Don't lose it. If you lost it, you can simply go to the place where you've gotten your vaccine and simply tell them that basically just consult your the person that you got your vaccine from, like H-E-B, and, uh, and they'll give you a replacement. You need to keep it on you at all times. And make sure that when they ask if you've been vaccinated, you show them the card. So that everyone's safe. This virus is spreading like wildfire. People think this is a game. It's not a game to be played with. This is the real deal. This Delta variant is out there. And if we don't do something about this, then probably till the next year, probably till we're about to have 2021 in four months, in about five months, and uh, hopefully we don't get to the point where we issued on the mass mandate for this year and probably all school districts are about to remote learning. So... But still, looking at a post from around the bluff, I simply asked him, what, what's the issue? Is What's the story? Did they enforce it? The mass man has a dress code, and, uh, I, and my post is simply leave because of, uh, because of an issue. Because it did not meet the uh, posted requirements. That post was removed yesterday, and uh, and my three posts were published. This was removed because basically because. Because of uh, because it was off topic for the page. When I simply asked a question, basically, I got the answer, and probably Joe Kramer, who are who is an admin for this. I just want to say, Joe, if you're watching, understands the rules. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to argue with you or start a fight. I'm basically saying I understand I violated the rules and I apologize for it. Basically, basically what I hear is people looking at this and going, I got an answer. Now that I got my answer, got my answer, I'm glad it was deleted. So moving forward to a notification, moving forward to a notification, I got basically it was probably
No political posts. I mean, no political posts. I mean, if you join this club, then uh, no political posts. So what's next for the pandemic? Well, they're probably going to do the same thing, not mandate masks. So I really hope that they stick with their decision. <sighs> Jeez, I didn't want to have to come on here and tell you guys about this, but I'm telling you guys, walkouts, I mean, even if you were to Google students suspended for doing a walkout, you'd have plenty of articles, and we're going to do that when we return. As you may recall, a couple days ago, did an episode to where Flop Up students were organizing a, uh, <clears throat> organizing a, uh, walkout for the dress code. Now, they got me thinking, are there any other people who have been spent for this walkout? Well, it happened, happened yesterday. With the uh, article from the Atlanta Black Star, which... So it says, get off it. Students walked out of the solitary black team. It was pinned down by a little teacher who once told the team he should just be another black boy shot. Really? That teacher who said that is racist. And again, this show does not, not encourage racism. And I deal with racism in a way. I think what probably needs to happen here, you gotta take the input association test. What that means is it'll determine whether whether or not you're racist or not. It, there was a video. And this happened. There was a video. Kentucky teacher seen black student Jamar on the ground and gripping the hair and pull a viral video of money has been reassigned to no instructional duties. This was a teacher. Students called the teacher to be fired during the Tuesday protest. The walkout, which followed the protest outside the school previous day, as the video began circling, was approved by the administration. Beforehand, the students agreed to stay on school grounds. Other protesters also attended the demonstration, standing solitarily with the students. We're not standing for any type of racism. We're not standing for any type of vulgarity. We're not standing for anything. That's the, what's right at the point of justice. The fight in the hallway. He was between 16 year old and a chemistry teacher who had been identified as William Bennett, who reportedly began after an argument about the student's bandana style face cover. The recording was captured by a school member. The video starts, it's pinned to the ground, and he's like, right, go with him, yada, yada, yada. And there is, an, there is the video. If I would play it on here to have you listen, I would, but not tonight. What I am going to do, though, is a strategy. I'm going to describe the fight as it is. So you see here, it's like the teach. I mean, the teacher pinned him. He's like, you're going to be just another black boy shot. I mean. That's me quoting the teacher. After that, this week students called just for and admit the assault charge. An investigation against him remains ongoing. He denied allegations of wrongdoing on social media. He denied it? Dude, you freaking pinned down the guy. How can you simply go, uh, it didn't happen? Maybe you were advised by your attorney to say that kind of crap. That's what I don't get. I mean, they deny doing this when they actually did it. When they say, I mean, if you do something you're not supposed to do, like pick on a student, you and you deny it. Or you say, I plead the fifth. Pleading the fifth means you can't answer that. Or people say, well, they can't comment. Well, many, well, mostly school can say they can't comment because of a law issue. And many people understand that law issue saying, they can't comment because of confidentiality agreements or or being advised by your attorney. But that's why I understand. You plead the fifth means you're not obligated to say anything. Um, yeah, I think and after that 
A GoFundMe page, get up legal fees and penalties, raise more than $24 this writing. Settlement to my teacher. Start a GoFundMe page for any lawyer fees that might be incurred. Taking 100% of my time to the sun. Erica Stain organized this and I want to congratulate her for this. Shooting was shot unless you're doing a drive by shooting has lost his friends to gun violence and found the statement particularly triggering. And again, if Stringer was suspended for 10 days, faces assault charge, made comments revoked him during the fight, but admitted he initiated physical confrontation. So, yeah, I think the teacher should be fired for assault to me. Assault's a big thing. If you ever watched Fist Fight the movie, you would understand what I'm talking about. Assault's a very funny thing. I don't stand for this, and if any teacher out there in Kentucky saw that video, they would agree with me that this is racist. It may not be about racism, but it's something I'll tolerate. When we come back, last two top five as we count down season five. Stay tuned. All this week, all this week, we're counting down to where our top five memories from this show as we celebrate season five of Give Me a Break, which will happen in two weeks after Labor Day. So here's a look at our last two countdowns. Basically, number two, my favorite memory of the show, going back to Going back to the video, going back to my channel, the videos that I did. Going back to all the video, going back to some of the videos I did. Was when I did a. was when um let's see here it's when I did the show field investigations it kind of, I mean the reason why I did these investigations did all the investigation this was the very first investigation that I've done looking into Allegations from the family. Keep in mind, this family went through child care services. The two children were diagnosed with schizophrenia. One was diagnosed with autism, the other was schizophrenia. And Susan decided, oh, he's diagnosed with both. Michael stood by and probably said, he's not diagnosed with both. And I have to agree with him to this point. 50 doctors and a lot of medicines? That's harsh. And my number one fair memory was from five years ago. I don't know if you can see it right now, but five years ago when I first started doing this show, I had freaking long hair. I had long hair when I first started this show. <laughs> Jeez, I look like... I don't know what I look like now, but I look, I'm look at you today. That was no more fair memory, and uh, that's a little preview of the first episode that I've done, and we're going to preview that. And we're going to preview for that for you in our two weeks from now. So, that's it for the countdown. Tune in two weeks after Labor Day for our fifth season of Give Me a Break as we as we look back at my long hair. <laughs> I probably have to wear a wig. That's all for this Give Me a Break Saturday. It's going to Sunday. I'll see you again in two weeks for, for the fifth season premiere of Give Me a Break. Have a good night, everyone. Stay safe. And I'll see you in two weeks. Hopefully with long hair. <laughs> Good night, everyone.